Hi everyone, welcome to the Matrix Oracle. My name is Audrey. I am going to be doing a pick a card reading. Now there's no piles because I like to use all the cards for each um, option. It's going to be more from your intuition. You'll have three options and it will be time stamped. So one, two or three. Um, those are the decks that I'm using, the Energy Oracle cards, the Everyday Witch, whoop, and the uh, Power Thought cards. So we are channeling what do we need to release on this 1111 portal so we can receive what we need to receive, what is meant for us, releasing the stress, releasing uh, the fights, the conflicts, and welcome what is in flow and in alignment with our heart and soul's desire. All right, let's get started. Pile number one, I feel I want to use the Power Thoughts card deck first. There's something about releasing some type of mental program here. Those cards are high positive affirmations. So we're seeing that there's probably a resistance to welcome something oh for some of you i feel someone <laughs> um maybe it's connected to others okay this pattern of belief so let's see what we have that wants to come for you all right let's see this first we're going to look at the front there is plenty for everyone including me is there something about comparison Something about lack mentality, victim mentality, or yeah, um, others are getting what they want, but I'm not. It says here in the back, the ocean of life is lavish with its abundance. All my needs and desires are met before I even ask. My good comes from everywhere and everyone and everything. I feel there's something here that the universe wants you to, to learn, okay? As far as when you're looking outside in your reality, looking at things that you desire as well. Oh, I would love to have that. Oh, I would love to do that. I would love to be like this person or be in that type of relationship. And realize the universe can only attract in your own sphere, even if it's on the internet, but it can only be brought to your attention for sparking up that desire because that's part of something you yearn for. It may look like it's a certain way because you see it in others, but it has its own personal expression within you. You're meant to have exactly what you want but in a way that is uniquely yours. So let's see how we can get through this process. I'm using now the energy cards. Um, ooh, we have some anxiety. Okay, so anxiety, let's see, that's the shadow. Anxiety usually comes when we're off alignment with our higher self. Sometimes we're focusing on the wrong things and if it's there it's like hey how am I supposed like you're seeing something that you want and you're like how am I going to get it uh and looking at the person how did they get it how did they manage how and and kind of like always in comparison instead of feeling it in your heart as if you're living the story of what you're witnessing you're that person that person is playing that role for you so you're witnessing that and then the anxiety can melt and then your higher guidance can come through and guide you through it as far as how to approach this pathway towards something that looks like what you think you want because it's what you see with your own eyes, but you don't know the behind. So it's going to come in its own shape and form for you at the exact divine time, through the steps that are yours, that can be inspired by others, that can be inspired by that source of uh, desire, but it needs to come from you. So that's like a very strong energy message. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here 
if it is about relationship, okay, this is an 11-11 uh, reading, so pile number one, it seems you got love on the brains, uh, but it's giving you anxiety. So this is where I would suggest surrendering, surrendering to source and saying, if it's meant for me, it's meant for me. Okay, some of you, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I posted this reel about what is meant for me. Let me read it for you. If you don't have Instagram or you're not following me on Instagram, uh, but I, I just loved it and it inspired me for this um, pick a card reading. When something is for you, it will bring clarity and alignment to your life, not chaos and confusion. When something is for you, it will not run or hide or avoid being yours. You do not have to chase after anything or anyone. When something is for you, you won't feel the need to beg, convince or force. Things will feel easeful, grounded and safe. When something is for you, it will not make you question or second guess your worth. Instead, it will remind you how worthy and loved you truly are. When something is for you, it will feel healthy and supportive, not toxic and destructive. When something is for you, you'll know it. Stop ignoring the signs. Release what needs to be released so that you can receive what needs to be received. Okay, I got chills everywhere on oh, my legs. And we're going to, <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing this as the next card. It says, everything I touch is a success. Okay, so that, I feel that some of you, you might have to realize that this comparison, it's, it could be like a, a trauma response to a childhood need that hasn't been met and fulfilled. So you have a tendency to look outside for that reassurance, for that feeling of being loved. Or um, some of you, you may have suffered from like trying to morph yourself to whatever uh, you feel that person you like wants you to be. And that's the same for your desires, okay? Uh, you might be creating from a place of, I wonder what people want. I wonder what will be successful. But success comes from your joy. It comes from you following your heart. And your heart gets broken every time you try to look outside when it has so much to teach you. Let's see what it says behind. I now establish a new awareness of success. I know I can be as successful as I make up my mind to be. I move into the winning circle. Golden opportunities are everywhere for me. Prosperity of every kind is drawn to me. Lovely. Ooh. Okay, so that's, that's where we want to be. That's where we want to be. Let's see if we have another message for you. Pile number one that wants to come forward. I feel breathing is important. You want to take maybe a walk outside uh, when you have anxiety and you're trying to figure things out and you're just driving yourself cray cray. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know this, you guys. I know this. All right. Uh, so go and walk outside. Nature holds sacred geometry in itself in all its expression that is so magical and that can really support you in such great ways. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Page of Pentacles. There's, there's a new way. There's a new way of seeing yourself, of going about your life, of, of doing things. And it's not like you got to change. No, 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 no. You have to undo, release the version that you became out of this habit out of this comparison, out of maybe not receiving what you needed from your past relationship, your parents, your friends, whatever. There is a new path. There is a new direction. There is a new direction, but see, I, I feel like some of you, you're scared to be wrong. I'm scared to make the wrong decision. You can't make the wrong decision. You are divinely guided. Your mistakes, what you consider mistakes, are part of building up whatever is meant for you. 
you got to release that also though. Because I, I just put this on over the broken heart. And I feel like this is what your, um, your heart feel is hurting it. Is that you make it feel it's wrong. I shouldn't be wanting this or loving this or you know but realize that if it is attachment to a person this is maybe an attachment to a toxic pattern that stems from your childhood from comparison but if you start working on yourself and shutting it down for a while and quieting yourself and uh, walking around and just breathing the fresh air maybe you will realize that this person this 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 thing maybe that there's attachment to it's not really it's not really you it's not really you it's an attachment to something that you may have become or may have become to believe out of ex past experiences that were hurtful okay so let's see here what we have we have the magician you got to switch this around okay i did not expect <laughs> cards to be uh, a continuation but I really feel that the magic here is you got to change your mindset so this is where I'm you know trusting the universe send me and uh, send me <laughs> send you and to me this way oh, what <laughs> see okay that's perfect perfect example okay of what happens when you are in um, a trauma response type of dynamic and relationship. So I had to channel this weird thing that just happened, okay, where I'm just confused. I can I, you, we up. Huh? Um, because part of some of the trauma response effect as a child, okay, and especially if it's been, you know, a couple years, decades for some of us, okay, uh, it, it kind of like snaps the neuron. There's like an effect in the brain waves that makes us very, very confused. We become very confused. It's very dense. We can't see through um, whatever is meant for us. And we're like, what was I saying again? Okay, so that, that might be um, you being in the presence of someone that and something that repeats and triggers some of this uh, childhood event, okay? So there is a need for you to understand that, to dive deep into this type of awareness. Um, again, let's see where it's going as far as what we had first with the comparison. Yeah, five of pentacles. There's a feeling of almost like homelessness, because it feels like you have to realize you're abandoning yourself, pile number one, when uh, you're doing this, when you're looking out outside. Okay, it could be that, <clears throat> it, it, you know, the person in front of you in those situations, yeah, they can have certain patterns that remind you of your parents, past relationships, but ultimately everyone is, that we are messengers for each other. We are just mirrors. And that means that when you're in those moments of anxiety and feeling that you have to compare, compete, it's actually your heart that has been broken so many layers further and further. And it's like, hopefully now she, he, whoever, is going to get it. Hopefully you're going to get it. You know, there's many layers to your aura, to your field. And that means when it's really, when others are able to pierce through and affect us directly, it's because this has already been damaged. They're just, they just have access. So you have to build strong boundaries, but boundaries towards not just people, but towards, um, you know, situations that put you in that same place. Okay, because the universe right now is saying, wants you to release some of the programs of comparison, feeling you're not receiving what you deserve, feeling that you're not good enough, because it has, in, it has tried to reach to you, reach out to you, so you can understand, and not by contrast anymore, hopefully by you 
diving deeper into softness and self-love and saying, okay, well, let me gravitate towards things that feel good, relationships that feel good without having to judge who's on the other end. Let me just spend more time with myself and see how I feel good when I'm alone. And when I meet others, how can I feel good? Not to please others, but just because I want to enjoy others' company, a moment, an activity. Okay, so maybe that's a, a thing for you as far as going after... <clears throat> wow, this is something about the throat. Let me see that throat. <clears throat> ah, you're not patient. Yeah. <laughs> impatience, impatience, impatience. Okay, so some of you, I don't even know. If you're like still watching point number one, I'm, I give you credit for that because you're still watching. Okay, because I feel that maybe some of you, if you pick to pile number one and you're not ready, you might not even be watching anymore because this is, this has been feeling like, but I know, I already know this, but there's something else that you need to know, that needs furthering, that needs unraveling. I would suggest for this one, you guys, because I do have, you know, special promotion according to certain phases. I've been doing Kali readings. Where is in your birth chart the Kali placement where we have the goddess of transformation and, and destruction, she helps you release those mental programs, okay? I've been doing some of those uh, for the last week. They are intense. Uh, I also did like the Venus transit reading on the Instagram subscription, and we spent a whole like PJ party <laughs> together. And this was intense. This is a very intense energy. Venus right now is next to Kali through Libra. So there's a lot. Libra is archetype of the subconscious. It's the dream. How do manifest our dreams? There's a lot of programs that we need to release. So that could be something that you want to look into. I have all my offers in the description box of this video. Okay, let's pull some more cards as far as a near future. Oh, that's the bottom card here. Yes. Yes. Three of Wands, you're going to alchemize. It needs your power. It needs your participation. This is why I was saying some people that if you're they, they clicked off and that's like f off. Okay, it, the ones that stayed. If you stayed, that means that whatever we channel here together, you're ready. You're ready for transformation. Okay, so that's why I have for you pile number one. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to give me a like, give me comments, you know, share with me how that resonated with you. Um, and uh, yeah, just join in the fun. Thank you so very much. All right, pile number two. I want to start for you differently. Um, when I was clearing the air and the structure of everything for you, I don't know why I said structure, uh, the yin-yang energy of this deck came reversed. So there's something about yin-yang, a separation. So some of you remember it's the, this is for the 1111 portal. So we could have, you know, energies about relationships that come up as a message. It might affect also how you work and play or how you feel about yourself, heart and mind. Um yeah, that, that's what I have for you. Um, I do have a yin-yang playlist as far as frequencies. Uh, if you need to get some support as far as this type of energy, if you're too yang, too much in your mind, listening to some yin, if you're too receptive and too emotional, you feel too much going into that yang and then rebalancing. Let's see what we have first for you. Yeah, rest and rejuvenation. This is interesting, pile number two. Because I was reciting a Kali Mantra just before. Um, this is something that is happening right now. We have a Venus and Kali conjunction as they're transiting uh, the sign of Libra. Libra is the archetype of the dreamer. It wants to help you achieve your dreams. But your dreams are within. They're within and that means that you need to go within. So for you, what you need to release, you need to go within in order to know. To know what ails. 
to know what is in this very far in the memory. Uh, I'm saying this because 19 is the first degrees of the sign of cancer. It talks about memories. It talks about remembrance. There's something you got to remember. And that means you might want to also go uh, into the subconscious. I do have a subconscious mind frequency that you can find in my empath survival kit. Oh, yeah. So this is about love, but this is also about intention. There might be something about love and intention. Let me see what. And I heard in my mind. And who? <laughs> okay. All right. So some of you, if you're watching this, maybe you're on the soulmate twin flame journey. And that's something that. Uh, is dear to your heart and there's something about maybe realizing that it is an activation for you to have a spiritual awakening and for you to embark on that journey. I have to share with you guys, I started this channel, it was back then Twin Flame Chemistry instead of The Matrix Oracle. I had a couple of different changes, you know, um, I had those visions about energy merging, bodies of fire, what I realized later on after how many years, 17 to 23, okay, um, pretty much six years, let's say a little less, but I started studying more astrology for the last couple of years and I realized that the people that activated me on this journey, especially the first that was almost like a... Um, uh, similarity as far as the coincidence with a kundalini activation because I had like kundalini activation spiritual awakening I had a lot of things happen at the same time that person natally had their son on my natal Jupiter very interesting because my natal Jupiter is also my Cali so this is a lot about for me Part of my spiritual growth and abundance is to know and to master the destructuring of the old, of the things that tie us back and tie us down. Then I had another person that I thought, oh, maybe that's my person. And that person had their son on my moon. Okay, well, that sounds like more twin flamey, but it was not meant to be. And it was really more to spark that energy of my moon the moon is the master teacher of the subconscious okay and the subconscious is definitely going to unravel a lot so there's something here as far as you um realizing a little bit of your journey and honoring all the activation that people give you this is something that i've I've done since I'm a young child. I cannot forget birthdays. So it was very easy for me to remember people that had an impact in my life and seeing that it never missed. My ex-husband, for example, I want to share you how deep that goes. His son was on my Pluto. Very destructive, karmic uh, wedding <laughs> and relationship through that. And it didn't divorce. But that was... I've, I've attracted a lot of people that... Boom, there is sound just on parts of my chart. And it helped me, sometimes very painfully. But this is something that I wanted to share as a little story for you because it feels like this, this, could, be, this could be holding you back. Remember, this is the title of this video. is like, what do I need to release so I can get and receive what is meant for me? Because it's always meant for you. Nothing that is meant for you can be taken away. But you can hold yourself back from it, okay? Yes, now that we know all this, ta-da, victory, okay? We're getting there, but let's not skip. We gotta, we gotta, this is before, it's all within. Within, you're going to find, and if you're looking for a relationship, this relationship exists in you. And when you start activating this, then it will come. For me, meeting the person I'm with right now, okay, it's been four years plus now. Um, it was exactly when I said, no more of this twin flame shit. You know, I'm like, I'm done. And actually, it was so synchronistic. It was a really a crazy encounter. But there was a lot to heal. And guess where his son was? 
my Chiron. <laughs> So my deepest wound, and not only is son, but like five, like five of replacement. I'm like I was, uh, mm, yeah, I was very activated for sure. So this is some of you if you're struggling with this astrology can help you. Okay, that's not for everyone, but I wanted to mention this because, because to me it helped me. It helped me. I let me put this, what I saw and what I wanted to say, put into the grave. It helped me bury and put it at peace, at rest. All this conflict and polarity that I experienced with other people. Because it was blessed overall. It was really blessed. Okay? So let's move on to here. The power thoughts that could could help with what's the mindset you need to adopt. It says, I do not have to earn love. No, you don't. I am lovable because I exist. Others reflect the love I have for myself. Okay, well, obviously, with, from, from what I've learned, I did not have love for myself. That I, I kind of knew, but I did not know the depth of it. Um, I didn't you know, really ever think about self-love. It really came more with my spiritual awakening. And some of you, maybe that's something you're discovering and you need to be okay with that process. You need to be gentle, okay? Especially if you had like serious trauma or any type of trauma and you're still trying to recover. It takes the time it takes, but you have to give you yourself that love and not looking it outside that's important for you right now. Pile number two, this is very much about self-love and, and being on that journey of discovery. Because believe me, I would not change anything in that on that path, okay? It was crazy. It was magical. It was painful. But it was like, it was just, it, it's it's been really fulfilling overall, okay? There's different levels and layers. Let's see what we have here. Um, I am worth loving. Self-worth, self-worth, self-worth. Let's see what we can have. Oh, this is interesting. This comes up and I feel that's a line. It is safe to look within. So some of you, maybe you're scared to look at yourself and do this meditation, meditative work because you're scared that looking at what ails is going to make you feel less of or this is ugly. I'm ugly because I did this. I thought this. I believed this. It's okay. You're human. And people that reach that level of human awareness, it, it, we all know this is that happens. And we all stop judging and we stop opening our hearts more and more. Okay. It says here, as I move through the layers of other people's opinions and beliefs, I see within myself a magnificent being, wise and beautiful. I love that I see in me. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> this is where I want to say yes. This is where we want to be. This is beautiful. Okay. This is like, this is like reviewing. Uh, so, so here for you, Pyle, um, you know, number two, there's something about reviewing where you're at, appreciating your growth. That's a reel that really hit home um, on my Instagram, uh, you know, acknowledging your your growth. I think it's uh, the music is Saya, Sia. I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce her name. Um, I got to, uh, Elastic Heart. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> okay, so we have the three of swords that come up. Again, so I feel like for you, maybe pile number two, this has been something recurring, okay? And welcome to the club. That was that for me. And I, there's no judgment. It takes the time that it takes. Obviously, there is probably some background story as far as why you would always feel like you don't deserve love. Um, and that's important for you to find out and to look at. Journaling seems to be something you would want to do. Right now, the sun, as I'm channeling this energy, is in placement that is speaking about mediumship, uh, being a vessel for messages from the universe. So definitely, this is a good time for you to just quiet yourself. What I love doing, and this is why I do my sound engineering, put some headphones 
and let myself feel the music and then start writing. And just like, even if it's like, ah, you know, even if it had to be like, Audrey told me to write and I don't really think it's going to go anywhere. But da 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 you know, uh, just take whatever you need to hold on to do it. Okay, sometimes I do this also for my clients when I tell them about dream journal and they're like, I don't remember my dreams. And I'm like, you, you remember that you don't remember. So that, <laughs> start with writing about this because really, ultimately, the habit of you taking the time when you wake up and rise to write about your night. You might not remember the thoughts, but you may remember the feeling of your night. Did you sleep okay? Did you feel good? That, that, did it feel like yummy? I, I love when I feel yummy sleep. That's like my most restful. It's like I can taste it. That's important. And, and what happened is that your every layer of your body and being just starts acknowledging that routine. And you need a certain routine. I feel for you there's something about your rituals that needs to be upgraded. We're going to pull all the cards here, I feel. King of Pentacles. That cake looks delicious. Ooh, Queen of Pentacles. Nice. Remember, this came reverse. I'm going to leave it reverse while we see where this is going. Because some of you, I really feel that that twin flame or soulmate was really what you were looking for here as far as an energy. Nine of Pentacles. Wait, hey, we have like the whole family that's coming here. Three of Cups. The Lovers. Wow. Wait a second. Let's make some space here. This is a complex. Uh, the Nine of Swords in the reverse. The Six of Cups. I mean, I could not pull more Twin Flame cards than this, as far as the energy of being called within the Two of Wands. Okay, let me feel this. I feel that, okay, your mind is in alignment with wanting love, okay? But there's, remember, because there's a resistance. So there's a polarity about love here. There's a polarity. Maybe you also have manifested some type of, you know, lifestyle that makes you feel and look very independent to others, but there's here, it feels like that, that could be like the shell, okay? But more like what's going on inside. Really inside, your mind is set on having this very special relationship, something that's divine. But here, you know, there's an attitude that is very empowering. So you, some of you, you're watching this, you have reached, you know, a certain level of appearance that feels empowered, but... All the cards here feel that there's a deep heart wound. There's something that you're still grieving. Maybe something from your... So the Six of Cups here, it could be something from childhood, a, fe a feeling from childhood. I used to... Let me share some more <laughs> from my personal journey. I used to, after a certain age, you know... Uh, after my divorce, I started being more attracted to people that were younger because I felt they were less jaded by relationship, especially after my ex-husband being much older and having that type of wound that his abuse was really caused by his first missed and, you know, cheating, like, engagement and, like, the, it, that he had not processed even, like, decades later. And that really left me with that belief that maybe just someone that doesn't have that experience, uh, it will be better. Mm. <laughs> it, it was not really about others and their wounds. It was about mine. Okay. Uh, here you have the Three of Cups. So again, is there something about you not being good enough to be the chosen one for that partnership? Is it the one? There's something about the one being chosen, not being the second choice with the two of wands here. And, you know, maybe people not choosing you. Um, 
we need to release that. That's, that's the thing. You deserve all the love. You deserve a perfect relationship. You deserve someone that is faithful, someone that is aligned with you, you know, whatever gender this is, this is, this is meant to be. Let's see what else wants to come forward for you. And that will be at the end here. My thoughts are creative. Oh, it, maybe you're not realizing, but your past experiences are fueling thoughts that keep on bringing more of that. Let's say what it says here. I say out, I, I say out to every negative thought that comes to my mind. No person, place, or thing has any power over me, for I am the only thinker in my mind. I create my own reality and everyone in it. Okay, go and check out the Super Empath playlist. I would say here, maybe you have had narcissistic parents, uh, attractions to personality traits of that, and you need to learn about psychic boundaries, psychic coercion, removing those type of debris, okay? There's definitely something as far as I love my body, being able to be grounded. So this, you know, people that have experienced physical abuse, we, yeah, like myself as well, um, we tend to withdraw from the body and we tend to not perceive then anymore the signals when we're in front, and this is funny because it's a sunflower that could be someone that maybe is just all about themselves. We're not able to sense that they're all about themselves because we have had so many experiences of withdrawing from the body that we're not realizing that it's sending a signal that is a run, red flag, okay? And we're not sensing it. We're not sensing it and we're just still staying in that place and experiencing all of this again and again so remember meditation is really good for you um please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this message you have in the description box a couple of options if you need support and guidance thank you so very much namaste Pile number three okay this is your turn i cleared the space and I feel this is something that needs to start with first. It's I release all fears and doubts. All fears and doubts. There's something about the crown here. And I would say also the throat, the upper chakra. There's something about the upper chakra, some type of perception here that we need to release. And I love that, you know, this is a release um, 1111 portal. So whatever has been in your way, this is meant, this message is meant for you to go beyond, go beyond this. Okay. It says, oh, this is interesting because it's kind of written in many ways. I don't even know where to start, but where I felt I wanted to start was I am loved and I am safe. Something about safety. Some of you, maybe there's some trauma, Okay, past trauma that are still lingering. Uh, it says, I accept myself and create peace in my mind and heart. I now choose to free myself from all destructive fears and doubts. This is interesting. Um, right now we have a conjunction between Venus and Kali in the sign of Libra. Venus is teaching you how to manifest your desires, your intention. And Kali is this goddess that is about transformation and destruction. And that means destructuring. I don't want you to feel fear. I feel that it's some, some type of like uncontrollable reaction. Now, I don't have any judgment about this. I have had many, many decades of work on releasing fear because of childhood trauma and abuse. So it doesn't have to be that drastic, but sometimes we don't realize, but some of the smallest things to others, for us, it just triggers some type of remembrance. And I feel this is where this reading wants to take you. What do we need to remember? What do we need to remember? Oh, this is interesting because it says here, I'm at peace with my age. So some of you, maybe the fact that you're, <laughs> okay, 
Uh, I never really felt that as far as my age, but I can understand because I'm turning 45 in a couple of days, okay? And if I had to have that mental pattern that I'm picking up on, uh, pile number three, I'll be very depressed because I'm like, I have still reaction where I can be frozen like I was as a child, as a victim to uh, physical abuse, emotional, intellectual, and so on. Um, if I was like, oh my God, I'm... F almost 45 and I still feel that way then I would re that would really hurt me on so many levels and especially my inner child because my my being doesn't have an age the trauma doesn't have an age the story doesn't have an age it leaves on and and persists because there's still some some things that need to be revealed okay and that's okay Let's write, let's write, let's write this together, okay? Take a pen and paper, please. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, each age has its own special joys and experiences. I am always the perfect age for where I am in life, okay? So just be comfortable with that. And maybe some of you, it's just about the time. I've seen since I'm in the States more, it's been 15, 16 years plus now, um, the, there's all this perception about, you know, when I'll be, I see it also if I watch any kind of like a reality show, Love is Blind, right? By the age of 25, I need this, 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 this. And by the age of 30, I'll have that, 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 that. And by the, yeah, uh, thankfully I never had that. And a part of it I had to acknowledge was that I didn't expect much uh, sometimes for myself uh, because of some of the trauma, but I still always had some of my creative passions, music and, and sports um, that and animals that always drew, drove me out of that state. But as far as relationship, others, material stuff, I, I really didn't have that much expectation. I just wanted happiness. Okay, um, so hopefully this helps you. I feel there's more cards here. <laughs> okay, let's go on. This helps you maybe a little more. It says here on this part, life mirrors my every thought. As I keep my thoughts positive, life brings to me only good experiences. So here, this, I feel this is more about releasing the scarcity victim mentality, but more as far as, you know, oh, I'm, I'm too happy. It's like joy almost scares you because you're expecting something bad to happen. And I've been there. I've had that so many times happen, pop back on, because there's almost that, and I'm going to share with you guys, uh, for me, what I've discovered was that I feel that the source of it was that in the moments where I got beat up, okay, or I had like, you know, it came out of left field, it came out of nowhere. Uh, sometimes it was like, and it was in moments where I was joyful and what I had to acknowledge was that I feel that it was uncomfortable for the parent that was abusive. It felt uncomfortable for them to see that. And that's why it made me interpret it that way, that my joy needed to be capped. It needed to be contained. Okay. That's not an easy experience. So if that's you, I'm trusting that this whole little part of the reading is going to help you and that you know sharing personal experiences is happening and supporting you as i say yes to life life says yes to me yes you gotta say yes and yes is joy so if you chose pile number three like i really feel for you because this is like i feel like this is soul family if you chose this this is like this is my tribe this is this is the one that are holding that light, holding that joy, no matter what. Um, and I, I had that realization studying also imposter syndrome, especially in narcissistic parenting or relationship. Uh, that helped me put this, what I shared with you together. Um, yeah, and I'm turning 45. <laughs> took me a while but we're here we're happy now <laughs> all right let's see underneath we've honestly we've always been happy 
until it seems to disturb uh, others, and especially people that I would attract would be more like my abusive parents. And that would, that would create more of that. So obviously I would repeat the same mirror effect. We talked about mirror and the same pattern. And it would reinforce in me the, that feeling. But that was not the truth. It was not this or that. It was in between, you know, and I had to figure that out. Men holding a heart. Where are we going with that? Let's see. I'm going to pull a couple cards. Third chakra, Archangel Shamuel. Okay, well, I feel that some of you, maybe there's... Um, and I'm not going to say it's not a gender. It's someone that uses more of their mind. You might have suffered from narcissism. Yeah, broken heart in the reverse. And I feel that what is more hurtful for some of you is that it broke you, but didn't break them. Didn't break them because... Um, oof, oof. Oof. it's just almost like it, it I almost like don't want to tap into that energy because it's it, and I don't want you to tap into that energy because we you don't think like that you don't think like that so it's like there's no need to start playing those mind games but it's important to understand them so I would say go and check out my super empath playlist my survival kit playlist for empath because this is like trauma bonding with narcissistic behavior personality and others sometimes sometimes they're full-on narcissistic but you know sometimes it's just it's just traits um but yeah Oof. yeah I, well yeah and i got really like my the side of my head on the right started hurting me let me let me tell you guys that's something i do and I want to showcase to you. I have this little <clears throat> chart for meridians. Okay. Okay. And um, I look at where it hurts. Stomach. Yeah. Stomach and it could be stomach and gallbladder. Okay. Stomach is the earth element. I feel that. Look at this, a stomach. And gallbladder is the wood element. Uh, it's related to Aquarius. Stomach is related to Gemini. Now, Gemini is a transmuter, so we need to transmute whatever is being stuck. But here, again, that could be someone totally self-centered. In French, we say nombriliste. It's like their, their world is around their navel. Okay, that's what we say in French. Um, so we want to release that. And the gallbladder, let me see what I put for. So I have a playlist for all the organs, and I would definitely uh, use this for you, um, pile number three. So, okay, on my playlist, let's see. We got the 12 organs, sound healing. Ow, that hurts. I used to be, you know, beat up with, you know, on, on, on the right side of the head, so... Um, that could be, that could be also for me as well. <laughs> this message feels very, <laughs> very personal also, <laughs> you guys. And that's why I said, you know, soul family, some of you, it was 11. It was 11 on the part of this little, um, pile number three, you guys. Gallbladder says it's allowing gratitude and decisive action. Uh, sometimes when we're caught in those narcissistic abuse uh, type of dynamics, we can't make good decision because it's all fear-based. We can't really see through really what's happening because it's all based out of fear, okay? And the stomach is usually connected to how you experience your childhood and that sense of safety and being provided for. So it allows you to feel fulfillment and abundance. And obviously, if you're watching this and you've also seen that maybe your um, your wallet is not uh, is not full, or you know you have a hard time with finances, you have a hard time. Remember, this is like the, the, your energy produces your potential, produces everything, your income, your inflow, everything. So I feel that some of you, you, you are in very great need to release those cords. There is a karmic entanglement 
in the super empath. Some of you, I would say, even go into the quantum fashion. I, I feel like pile number three, if you're like my soul tribe, you need to listen to all of it. <laughs> because, because definitely, this is like, this is, everything I create it is based off a lot of that story, okay? If you need support, please let me know. The Hierophant in reverse. Do you even have the ability to meditate and sit and sit still? When before I even had my spiritual awakening, I remember trying to meditate. I would close my eyes and my whole body would feel, feel, it was an illusion, feel like it was shaking as if it was an earthquake. I would open my eyes and nothing was happening because that was what was my inner world, an earthquake. Remember the earth, the stomach, that was, that was, that was trying to hold on to dear life. Okay. For some of you, I, I just, I felt I needed to tell you the year 2012. That was for me, but you know, that could be also for someone. So we need to um, bring ourselves into a meditative state where we bring the with the Hierophant, the energy of yin and yang together, I feel that there's some shadow work, definitely. Pile number three, you're the deepest. It feels like the deepest, the deepest, the deepest. The strength is in the reverse. This has been draining your life force for way too long. I feel like some of you, if you're resonating with this, you might want to consider, you know, um, joining my temple. I have like this uh, meditation temple where we do some practices, a sound bath, and things like that. Um, I didn't feel like I wanted to offer it, but then I'm just like, like this needs to be addressed. You need to be able to, to look at all this. This is all darkness. This is you need to be able to just move through this. And I know that the ones that are going to be listening to this fully, this whole message, they're the ones that are going to be the brave ones and ready to do the work because this is not easy this is not easy i have a couple of people right now that are popping into my mind yeah because you have to you have some mental prisons that you want to um, break free but look at this it's coming your time is coming i got chills every freaking wear on my body oh my god oof this is coming. Some of you might be something in your birth chart. Okay, I'm going to give you one big solution. Go and check out your Chiron wound. Okay, that's one of my greatest gifts that I can give the collective as far as helping with that one placement. Okay, for me, that was my greatest wound. Uh, and I've worked and I still sometimes continue to work with this when I feel the repetition of those patterns. And I worked with it, uh, you know, if, so if you're Chiron, for me, it's in Taurus, okay? Uh, I put Taurus with Scorpio. This is interesting because my son is Scorpio, but it doesn't matter if you have placement in the polar opposite. Why I did this is because it helps you stay in balance between the polarity of what you were given as a soul growth alignment, you know, and its counterpart, you know, so being able to have that in the frequency that is engineered so you can take from that experience whatever is meant for you. And definitely, you are someone that is probably a black sheep, a karmic warrior, shadow, light worker, warrior. Uh, there's a lot in you that I feel is just you are here to, <clears throat> you know, it's almost like you gravitated. You gravitated towards people that were attracted by your light because you were such a bright light in other people's life. But it's time to take back ownership. Yes! <laughs> That's how we're going to end it, baby. Queen of Wands. Okay? This is going to be just old memories. You see, now it's like this whole thing became the power of the dragon, the power of birthing, and being inspired from, and what I love to use as a quote for myself, I call this turning scars into stars. 
This is some my greatest achievement as far as everything that I've alchemized, and I am seeing this for you, pile number three. If you like this reading, please don't forget to like. If you want to leave a comment and connect, if you want to look at my options for support and for the playlist, you have everything in the description box. Thank you so very much. Namaste.